Welcome to a video on a multi-path feedback bandpass filter. So we are going to look at the Q factor when it relates to bandpass filtering, then the design, circuit equations, choice choices, and tweaks. And lastly, we will do some problems and then some simulations. So first off, the two specifications that you will typically have for a bandpass filter is the bandwidth and the center frequency. And that gives us our Q factor, which is where our whole design would revolve around is the Q and the center frequency. So the multipath feedback uh, bandpass filter as a feedback through resistor 2 and a feedback through um, capacitor C2 here. And as you can see, it doesn't have positive feedback. So you can achieve much higher Q factors using uh, this configuration, but that costs a lot of gain from the amplifier itself. Okay, so you need to have an amplifier that is capable of wide bands and extremely high gains. Okay, so if we look at the equations, the passband gain is dependent on all the components and it's inverted. The center frequency is dependent on all the components and the Q factor is dependent on all the components. So, to get to design equations, we can pick certain components to be the same. But since everything is dependent on everything else, if I can put it that way, we can't select, say, all the resistors to be the same. Right, so the choice is typically to choose a capacitor with the same value, which reduces the center frequency to the root of the two resistors. And multiplied by the capacitor here, the Q factor is dependent on the two resistors and the final gain is dependent on the two resistors. So, typically you will design for a specific center frequency and a specific Q factor. So. Making design equations out of these two, we get an equation for resistor 1. So it's 1 over 4 pi center frequency Q C and resistor 2 is the Q factor over pi F0 C. The gain, however, is the inverted of twice the Q factor squared. So at the Q factor of 100, you're already sitting at the gain of 20,000. 20, okay, so your amplifier must be able to supply a large amount of gain if you want to reach a high Q factor. Right, then since we don't have control over the passband gain, we can again split resistor 1 to become a voltage divider and the new equations that will emerge looks like this and it's a function of only the new gain here and two times the Q is the old gain. So if you watched the previous video on bandpass filters, this was old gain over new gain in here. Okay, so simple design equations only you only need to use four of these for a complete design for a specific center frequency, a specific bandwidth or Q factor, and a specific gain. So let's go and look at some problems. And before we do that, note that this filter can do actually very high Q factors and will not turn into oscillator like the KRC bandpass filter. Right. So the first problem again, design a 10 kHz bandpass filter with a 1 kHz bandwidth. 
in the previous video we did a KRC so in the end we will compare this filter to the KRC design um, use 10 nanofarad capacitors calculate all the components E192 resistor values and we need the final gain. Then the redesign for 100 hertz bandwidth. And then both filters to have a 40 decibel final gain. So it's first a, a 10 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz, then with 100 hertz, and then both for 40 dB passband gain simulate the problems. So you can pause the video here or go back to the equations and design a bandpass filter and we will look at the solution momentarily All right the solution is as follows center frequency divided by bandwidth first gives us a q factor of 10 for the second one we can do these side to side the q factor is 100 for the 100 hertz so let's choose all the capacitors to be the same at 10 nanofarads. And from here on it's plug and play. So resistor 1 will be a 79.6 ohm resistor. And the resistor 2 will be 31.6 kilo ohms. And 2 times the, the Q factor squared is a gain of 200. The second problem resistor 1 becomes 7.96 ohms so you can see that the Q factor directly scales these resistors so if we scale resistor 1 we scale the Q factor and same with resistor 2 we can also just scale resistor 2 for the Q factor right so this becomes 316 kilo ohms and a gain of 200,000 or 86 dBs. Right, now the design for the, to correct the input gain. So we have 200 available in this one and 200,000 in the second one. So 40 dB gain is 100 volts per volt. In the first one we have 200 available. So for a voltage divider, we should know that, that would, two resistors would be the same value. So if we plug it into the first equation, we get 160 ohms. And in the second one, we also get 160 ohms. And this is almost 80. So 2 times is 160, 160. And if these two are in parallel, we get 80. So... This absolutely makes sense in terms of a voltage divider because a parallel combination of this is still responsible for the frequency and the Q factor. Now we just have half the input at, at, at the input of the, the filter and we will have half the gain that is available. Right, the second one if we plug in the values, we get 1.6 kilo ohms and 8.06 ohms, which is a very low value. Since the Q factor is so high, the gain becomes extremely high. So the most of the input voltage will sit over 1.6 kilo ohms, and the remainder will sit over R1B. So the input is reduced by quite a lot so that we can bring down the gain of a tire system to 100 volts per volts. So let's jump over to the simulator and let me show you the filters and the comparison with the previous bandpass filter video. So here I have our two multipath set up and I had to select a different op amp for these problems because the, Q, the, the, the gain required by the amplifier is so high so the AD 
8065 um, has extremely high bandwidth 135 megahertz gain bandwidth product so it will be sufficient for these so let's run the simulation and see what we get out so the first amplifier we calculated this at about 46 decibels around 10 kilohertz and this one at 86 and as you can see this is a bit off due to the component choices so these filters are extremely sensitive to component choices and we are already using E192s um, so at the lower uh, Q factor it's not as apparent that there is a bit of a mismatch but for this high Q we can see it quite clearly okay so both has a nice gain we can see the Q factor nicely Let's jump over to the gain corrected versions of these filters. Right, so here I already adjusted the values a little bit to compensate for frequency. And if we run it, this is the gain of 40 dBs quite nicely. And the second one that sits at a gain of 40 dBs quite nicely. So this one we can see that it cuts off really, really fast. And this one is a bit slower. And we can see the bandwidth quite nicely. And both of them have been corrected for gain. Right, let's jump over to the comparison between the bandpass filters so here is a comparison between the two both has been designed for the same specs so this is the KRC one both has been designed for a Q of 100 and a 40 dB uh, Pause band. And what I found is that with the KRC design and standard components, it's a bit more in the correct position. But shape wise, we can see that the, the multi path has a bit of a quicker cutoff than the KRC, but they are very, very, very similar. Um, even if we can get them to, to line up perfectly. But you're always going to have to play around in the simulation with the values until you find something that works quite nicely. Right, I corrected this resistor value here to match with the previous simulation. And. Now we can see that if we could increase the gain a little bit, they will almost match perfectly, but the multipath is cutting off a little bit quicker than the KRC, but they are really similar. So if you need a bandpass filter, I would rather go with uh, the multipath because it's not going to change into oscillator at high Q factors um, like the, the KRC bandpass filter. Right, and that is the multipath bandpass filter. Thank you for watching.